Brandon's here in the Kabuki studio. We are talking split squats. Now this specific split squat variation is not necessarily one that you're going to try to load your quads super heavy or load your glutes super heavy or hamstrings or anything like that. Uh, it's going to be more of a foot strength, ankle stability and calf strength drill. So if you don't want to be a goober who uh, goes and does a bunch of calf raises after your powerlifting training because you want bigger calves, this is a great way to do your calf training and strengthen your feet. So what we have here is two boxes. Uh, they're about two inches in height, I would uh, estimate. And what we're gonna do is set Brandon up exactly as if we were to do a deficit split squat. The difference being is that we are going to offload the front foot and only have him press his forefoot into the ground. So if you can imagine like your three points of contact in your front, you have the two in the front, one in the back. Imagine just those two points in the front of your foot as the thing that is in contact with the actual platform. So we're trying to, uh, we don't, we wanna give him some support. He doesn't need to just be hanging on with his toes, but I want him just with barely enough support to uh, maintain his balance here. Now the rest of the drill is a normal split squat. Go on and hit it, Brandon. Do a few reps here. Now, I highly, highly, highly recommend doing this barefoot. I would not do this with your lifters on or any big chunky shoes. Uh, Brandon has a minimal shoe. It looks like a Merrell type shoe, which is very thin, it's wide. I would highly recommend using a shoe like that or going completely barefoot, and that's going to reap the entire benefit of this drill. If you can balance and you don't feel too off balance in this position with no load, grab yourself a kettlebell. Again, we wanna train it heavy. We don't wanna treat this like just balance type work. So uh, we grabbed the first kettlebell that we saw in here. I think it might be 30, 40 pounds. This is going to make this drill a lot harder. You can play with how you hold it. We prefer to go in the goblet type position as Brandon set up here, but you could easily hold two on one side. You could hold one on the other side, but if you're really trying to strengthen that calf in that foot, we're pushing that out in front of us just a little bit like a normal goblet squat would be. Now that's going to light up your calves. It's going to really make your ankle stabilize and uh, if you have ankle mobility restrictions, you probably have a weak foot, you have a weak calf. This is the way that you actually improve ankle mobility. It's not by doing banded stretches and, and anything like that. This is, uh, this is the, the real way to do it. So um, with that said, we're likely doing this as prep work or at the end of a training session. If you do it as prep work, we're going just body weight and we're really focused on nailing that foot into the platform. I do not want any wiggling of the foot. The more that that foot moves, the less uh, the less you're requiring your actual foot stabilizers in your arch to work and it's more of a balance drill, so really focus on that contact. And if you feel like it is somewhat impinged in terms of your movement, I would pause at the bottom position and let your body acclimate to those joint angles under load. If you do it at the end of your uh, training session, highly recommend going higher reps here, probably 10s to 15s, and go as heavy as you can in those reps without tipping over. Again, if you, uh, as many power lifters, they may not want to admit it, they still want to have bigger calves, they still want to have bigger biceps, even though those things aren't that conducive to powerlifting. So this is a way to uh, sneakily do your calf training in front of all your powerlifting buddies. How'd that feel, Brandon? Very challenging. Just make sure that we're still achieving good joint angles. We're not getting too much pitched over at the hip. Nice and upright, good shin angle, all that good stuff. We're not ending up something like here, mm -hmm. and we're actively trying to grip that floor with our two points of contact there as we go down and up. And with all split squat type variations, if you really wanna maximize your foot mobility, take both of your shoes off back foot too, that's gonna to require a lot of your forefoot to work through that range of motion, which is really important for proper gait and many other things. Brandon, Brandon out. Cool. Well guys, again, trying out the live thing. Uh, we might keep rolling with this. If you like it, let us know. If not, um, don't. <laughs> but we, uh, we may film all of our movement videos live and then post them later, at which point you'll get a little sneak peek if you're on our page. That said, I don't know how to end live videos. Fade, yeah. fade, fade, to, fade. fade to darkness. Fade to darkness, switch the light.